Hegel's an observer, and, excuse me, Hegel is an observer, and he does not involve himself in the, the, the system that he has built. Like, there's the one description in there where he talks about, it's like he's built this beautiful mansion, but he lives in, like, the janitor's closet outside or something. Like, he doesn't live in it because that that's SI in my mind. Or, and I think you can get that sort of with SE, but in Kierkegaard's case, it's definitely SI because it's this sense of you need to live your day-to-day, -day, everyday life, Right? Um, you're not, not, not living moment to moment and sort of getting as much out of it as possible. It's no, that's not what you should be doing. You need to live something that is sustainable day to day. And that can be sort of, uh, almost abstracted out into what we could call a style of life or a mode of life that he then describes in his books. Um, and there's another there's another great passage that I actually quote in the book because it's just it's it's perfect, um, where where Kierkegaard is describing, uh, he says if you meet one of these these Hegelians is essentially what he's saying, if you meet one of these philosophers then um, make sure to check before talking with them if they're actually an existing being because they may not really exist. He doesn't say it quite like this, but uh, he's essentially saying you know. Do they, do they have to blow their nose when they're philosophizing? You know, do they have to eat or use the bathroom or, or whatever? Like, there are things that tie them down to this existence, but they're continually trying to ignore them. And it's like, no, you shouldn't ignore them. This is, I think, the INFP often takes this position where it's like, no, we need to live an actual SI life. Like, so it almost can turn into like an anti-philosophizing attitude in some INFPs, I think, where they, and it really bothers me. <laughs> it's, um, like in, uh, like, I'll never forget, there was one professor, uh, 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 it's a long story what I was doing there, but he was, it was like an art kind of class or something. He was talking about he was talking about some experience he had had at like a retreat because he was like he would he ran a lot of retreats um for uh different organizations and things and he was very much into like mindfulness and meditation and stuff and um but he he was talking about how this one guy uh he was doing this retreat and this one guy was like peep and he was like i really respect this one guy because he said you know you people are all just posturing you keep saying these like big big words and big concepts and things, but, like, it's not real, you know, it's, it's, um, you just, you're just jabbering, like, I want to know what you're actually feeling, man, and it was something like that, and I was listening to it, like, I feel like you would be saying that to me after I had, like, done my best to expound, like, on my feelings, in my NI way, and you'd be like, no, you're just posturing, it's not authentic, because it's not SI, I guess. I don't know if that'll make sense, but and I'm still trying to grapple with it, exactly what I was perceiving there, but it bugged me, because um, I felt like he wanted, you know, he wasn't going to accept me until I acted like him, um, and thought like him. Uh, and, and because what, what, what he wanted was, in my mind, basically to not be anything anymore. It was almost like I had to erase myself from existence and see what was left, and then he would be happy with it. But it's like, that's not what I am. What I am is I'm trying to observe things that are actually in the world. So this is... This relates into SI versus NI, because for SI, if, and this is something I believe, um, host Eric from Talking With Famous People, uh, this is, <laughs> this is probably the only time I've ever mentioned them, um, and I'm very sorry about that, uh, I <laughs> there are so many channels, and, um, but I do know, yes, I do know about you, uh, in case anyone's wondering, um, I don't know if he'll have watched anywhere near this point in the video, but, I'm crediting it, crediting it to him because he had uh, he had mentioned in one video. I think it was actually a video talking about me, but excuse me. 
it was about SI, uh, and he just, it was just like a throwaway comment, um, but it just like lodged itself in my brain because it made everything make so much more sense. This notion that the, that SI types will often not be interested in NI's philosophizing because they don't see any relation it has to their own personal concrete life. Like, it has nothing to do with them. And so that's a part of why they're, they can often be more conservative or traditional, even, even though the ideas they, the particular ideas they may have are not themselves actually on the spectrum. They're, they might be highly progressive ideas, but they hold them very stubbornly from the NI type's perspective because the NI type will be trying to expound all these ideas and, and because it's rooted in the SI type's actual concrete life. And so it's like when you try to do all this intuitive talk to them, they're just like, okay, but it's like you're blowing smoke at me. Like, none of this stuff sinks its teeth into anything. Like, it doesn't, because I'm passing it through my own body and I have nothing that relates to these crazy ideas you're talking about. It's kind of like, and this is a condescending image, but um, uh, it's kind of like the hobbits in the Shire. Um... <laughs> Uh, because they they have their safe little hobbit land, right? And they have everybody has their own little house. It's safe. It's under this hill, you know. And you um you you have all of your things. Nobody goes on adventures. Everybody knows what's going to happen. It's sunny and blah blah blah. Meanwhile, outside of the Shire, there's like this enormous world historical battle raging. And the only reason that none of it for a while got into the Shire is because the rangers were specifically protecting them. So you have the hobbits who, whenever anybody comes in from the outside who's been on, like, adventures, like Bilbo, and is like, hey, there's some crazy stuff out there. Like, there's so much that we had no idea was, like, actually really relevant to us. We just didn't know about it. All of the hobbits are like yeah, we're not going to believe you because the, what are we supposed to do? This is our life right here. Like, I don't see what what the connection is supposed to be. What is the concrete connection between these highfalutin philosophical ideas and notions and news about these big, high, powerful magicians and stuff? Like, I'm all the way down here on the earth. They're battling up in the sky, right? Like, you're talking, it's like, it's like trying to convince somebody that they should care about what's happening on Mars. It's like, why should I care about what's happening on Mars? That's, I think, how NI can appear to SI. And the problem is that NI, not always, but often, is in fact very relevant in ways that the SI type will not realize until it's too late. Um, and that there is a great deal of benefit to being able to see the motions of of these waves uh, before they even happen. Uh, uh, you know, there's a there's a scene from a film I can't remember what it is. It had to do with surfing, but like there's this like surfing master <laughs> or something, and he's like, um, right? What was the film? Anyway, uh, and he's teaching this other guy, and this other guy is like out on the waves on a surfboard, and he and the guy's like, watch the wave, and he's like, what wave? And he's like, the one right behind you. And there's, the ocean's flat. And then the master guy turns around and he's like, one, two, three. And like, on the count of five, like, you slowly see this roll. And then the wave appears and just wipes out the one, the one student guy. That's like very much how NI is. It's like there's nothing to indicate what is going on. Uh, and yet the NI type somehow knows this and it's probably extremely frustrating because it's like, it's, there's no way that you could know that. Therefore you didn't know it, right? Like, and so, so for the SI type, there's this sense, I think of, um, not wanting, not wanting or knowing how to engage with things that are not directly rooted in their concrete life and sort of these highfalutin ideas, because in their sense, it's like, well, then I would just be lost. I would be lost among the stars, like this astral projection notion from John Carter. It's like, I don't want to do that because then what am I guided by? I'm only guided by my instincts. 
like and then who knows where I'll end up like I need to be guided like by this this system that I've developed here on the earth that is holding me down um but the uh you know but the uh, you know the NI type has a goal that they're moving towards even if they don't realize it and that's what guides them it's like the hunter versus the uh the citizen the hunter has no external structure they're the contextual one they have their own goal and the goal is usually externalized in the game that they're trying to catch whereas the citizen has all these other people around and all these structures and rules and things that are what ground them and so uh, I don't know if I've done the best job of explaining uh, the problems that an SI type might have with NI. I will leave off with this, I think, that um, uh, there's no way to confirm if it's true, but it is a very good illustration. Jung, in The Undiscovered Self, that little slim volume he wrote later in his life, The Undiscovered Self, he says that Freud had told him uh, at one point that... Um, the reason that he had made a dogma out of uh, the sexual aspect of libido was because that was the only way he could see to ensure that there was uh, a concrete scientific grounding for the things that he was observing. Um, because if he didn't have something that was sort of like regular and everyday and everybody experienced it in like this concrete sensory way, namely the sexual impulse... If he didn't have that, he was like, it would just be a black flood of occultism would flow out of the study of psychology. Because we would have nothing concrete to base this, and everybody would just kind of be swept away into who knows where. And of course, that's precisely what Jung was kind of doing every day. Because, because Jung, and yeah, I believe Jung is like, well, yeah, he's absolutely right, but what's the problem here? Here, not with the occult part, well, some of that, I guess, but but um, uh, he was much more, uh, I guess you could say, um, higher in openness, according to the Big Five, and so, uh, but Freud was like, I can't get swept up in that, because I don't know where I'm going to end up. It's kind of how the TI type, I think, is often regards FI, I think, is a, is a mirror of that. Um, whenever you have TI, it's going to be very averse to some degree to, um, uh, to FI, and we'll try to describe it as FI just has these instincts that it doesn't try to control, and who knows where it's going to end up according to its whims, and the FI type it just doesn't see it that way. They're like, maybe they are instincts, but there's something divine about them, and I trust where they're going to take me. Okay, I think I'm good. This is not as what I what I need to do is just make more of these so that way I don't feel like I'm getting everybody's help, hopes up for, for something that isn't quite as rambly. Oh, anyway, um, thanks for listening. I hope there's something helpful in here. I'm just trying to get my ideas uh, together as I'm writing the book. So, all right, take care.